Are you glad that God knows you? Yes. And uh, again, just as, as I thought about somebody leaving, I, it threw me to, again, those words, uh, where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? Right? So, you know, I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me, even in Davis, California. <laughs> Sacramento. I'm glad that God has formed all of your inward parts and knitted you together. We're celebrating that next week as we walk for life. Um, we've got a lot of people in this room you could uh, go online and support under the Grace Baptist Choir team. So you can think of that. That's great. Um, but I like it when the psalmist says, My frame wasn't hidden from you when I was being made in secret. And your, eye, your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious are your thoughts, how vast is the sum of them. I would count, if I would count them, they were more than the sand. I awake and I'm still with you. Do you ever, do you ever wake up in the morning and the first thought you have is God is with me? It's a good it's a good thing to try to uh, craft in your life. It's just say hi to God. First thing in the morning, just say hi to God. But if you're familiar with this hymn and so or with this psalm, it's it's always interesting to me that all of this sense of the presence of God and how important that is <laughs> is followed by, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. <laughs> and yet, my sense is, I want to be so aware of, not just the presence of God, but I want to be aware of the holiness and the purity of God in the moment to where anything that strikes against that just doesn't fit. Not only does it not fit, but it's something you just you just kind of rile against. Um, and I can't help but feel that that's what happens. <coughs> that the thoughts of God knowing you intimately, the thoughts of God forming you purposely. There's nothing about you that God did not form purposely. You might have added a little bit to it. But I think it's the issue over here. I try not to look your way. The, the, the issue, though, is one that, that is, there's no mistake about you. And when you start thinking about that, it's not about you. It's about a God who wanted you to be exactly what you are. And so all of a sudden, it's like, how could anybody stand against that? And of course, in this case, the psalmist has a, 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 a particular people in mind who's you know, after him. But even after that, when he explodes with this sense of, I think, holy hatred of anything that would stand against God, it turns back around. And the next verse says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Right? Because it's easy for us to feel like our anger is righteous. Um, and yet, oftentimes, I think somebody once said that, that I, I, I will turn to love and pray for somebody, what, an enemy, if you will, when I realize that I'm more like them than not. And I think that's where we have to recognize we can get up on our righteous horses and look down on people for all of their failings, and yet, you know, you and I are one step away from disaster, and the disaster is within, right? So I think the issue here is, again, um, what the psalmist says, see if there be any grievous way in me. And that word grievous is an interesting one, because it doesn't just refer to hurtful things within me, but it also has a nuance that means uh, the pain of exile. In other words, the, the word grievous was used as, as the Israelites felt themselves exiled. 
And when you feel yourself exiled from God, somehow distanced from God, something is got between you and the Lord, right? Um, I think that's really the nuance in some ways of this word grievous. Is there a grievous way in me? Now, many of you were with us last year and you remember that I asked you to do a little homework assignment. And I'm going to ask you to do it again. That's kind of why all this is leading up to what this is leading up to. Okay? Um, what I want you to do is I want you to realize that, yes, the church wants me to be a choir director. But when I stand before God, um, I don't think God's going to complain about your music. I think what he's going to hold me responsible for is that I disciple this group of people. That I love this group of people enough to care about them growing and maturing. Um, are there people sitting in this room that haven't changed since I came 25 years ago? That would be a very sad thing, right? So my heart is, every year, I just want to have you <coughs> ask the question of God, see if there's any grievous way in me. Is there anything that has feel, allows you to feel apart from God, exiled from God? And uh, that can be any number of things, folks, anything. It can be a sense of, of your lack of trust. It can be a, a lack of faith in some ways. It can be some, sometimes your own self-concept. In other words, you wrestle with the fact, I know my identity is in Christ, but I can't get over the fact that I'm fill in the blank. <laughs> if there's a lot of things that you and I can struggle with, but only between you and God would you know the things that maybe he would say, okay, it's time to look at this. <laughs> maybe that's your anger. Maybe that's your sense of hurt. Maybe it's loneliness. May I don't know what it is. I don't want to go on and on. But I want you to know something that some of you, all of, most of you, I think all of you, received a piece of paper that you were praying for somebody. And I happen to know that there were some pretty huge breakthroughs last year based on the things you prayed for. Now, you wouldn't know that because you don't know who you were praying for. But oftentimes, the people will come to me and they'll say, hey, I know that this happened, I know this happened, and I know people have been praying, and I'm moving in that direction. So that's your homework assignment. I, want, I, don't, I don't want you to just speed into this. I don't want you to take it right now and just, okay, I know what it is. Although some of you may. I want you to take a week, and I want you just to pray for a week about between you and God and say, Lord, show me if there's something in me that's separating me from you. If there's any grievous way in me, right? Um, and lead me in the way everlasting. Try me and know my thoughts. And maybe sometimes... You need to know your own thoughts. You need to look at it. Now, if you've got somebody in your life, apart from this group, that you're close to, that you could, you know, just ask them, what do you see? Right? Uh, that's somebody you really trust, right? But um, we all need people like that in our lives. And uh, sometimes it's a husband or wife. Sometimes it's a good friend. Right? Um, so all I want you to do is I want you to pray for a week. That's all I want you to do. Because God probably has you right now in a position in your life where he's pushing, he's poking on something. Right? <clears throat> Maybe he's poking on you believing that something's going to happen that, that he wants to have happen, but you don't. Or maybe something you, you want to take a step of faith in. I don't know what that is, but I know that God has never done with you or me. Right? So, next week when you come in, what I would love you to do is come with a little piece of paper that just ha does not have your name on it, but it has something as a descriptor that somebody could pray for, right? Pray that I get over the fact that I look for my identity in everything but Christ. Look that I can begin to love my husband or wife again look that I can show more compassion to my children. Uh, pray that I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go on, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. I want you to know that it is, makes a difference because I believe this is a group that prays for each other. It may not be every day, 
but my hope is is that you bring that in. It helps me understand the group a little better. Helps me, to, you know, provide some of the devotional thoughts that we have, and then it also helps you own the fact that somebody in here is praying for you, even though they don't know who you are. And uh, I'm just very excited about some of the things that I know happen as that happens. So that's what we're going to do. Clear? Mm -hmm. yes. All right, good.